Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Policy, talking about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the collaboration album between Eminem and Shady Records, at least the rest of them, and the album titled Shady 15. I wish that I had a better feeling going into this album than I did have. See, when I heard that Eminem was talking about launching another collaboration album, I immediately had some very real concerns, because I remember what happened last time when this happened eight years ago with Eminem Presents The Rhea, a record that had a few pretty decent songs on it, but really in retrospect was nothing all that special. I'll reiterate back what I said in March when I reviewed the Young Money compiler violation project rise of an empire that these sort of records are made for three main purposes reassert the strength of the old talent show off some cool interplay across your label from artists who wouldn't normally collaborate it and of course you show off the new guys the new talent and yet shady records is in a bit of an odd position in comparison with its other rap label peers like young money or tde it's proven to have a really shaky track record of establishing definitive new stars i mean albums from yellow wolf and slaughter has proved to be really non-starters even despite the very real talent behind them and while the bad meets evil project was the biggest shot of adrenaline to Royce the Five Nines career pretty much possible, the last EP held a sequel hasn't exactly been a record that I've really felt inclined to revisit outside of maybe one or two songs. Plus that song Lighters, one of Eminem's bigger hits, is one of his worst hits ever. Now that's not saying I wouldn't enjoy the wordplay of a record like Shady 15 because it was bound to be good knowing the talent behind the label. But I gotta be honest, I did not have high expectations for this album at all. And you know what, there were other issues too. With the leadoff single Guts Over Fear being one of Eminem's least interesting opening singles for a project pretty much ever. And while I understood bringing on Sia and Skylar Gray for the hooks, why the hell was Danny Brown, DJ Loaf, Trick Trick, and Big Sean on this album? Sure, I get it, Detroit rappers. But wouldn't it make more sense just to stick with your label if you're looking to put money behind them? And okay, maybe I'll understand putting Danny Brown and DJ Loaf on this, but I gotta be honest here. Trick Trick hasn't been relevant on a rap song in years, and Big Sean shouldn't be relevant. Period. And the fact that this album was also being included with a disc of former Shady Records hits, most of which are from artists who are no longer signed to the label, it screamed to be their inner scope's interference to guarantee some form of investment or just pure desperation on their part. In other words, not a sign of confidence, not a good sign. But you know, this is Eminem. And even though his track record has been kind of inconsistent in recent years, he's still got a solid group of rappers behind him, and he's a great rapper himself, one I really have liked for a long time. So this is bound to be pretty solid. Right? Well, you know what? I'll be honest. This is actually a fair bit better than I was expecting that it'd be. Now, granted, my expectations for this album were really low, but for the most part, I enjoyed Shady 15. It's not without its problems. It's big problems. And I'd argue that it's not as good as the Marshall Mathers LP 2, but it was still a surprisingly enjoyable listen. But for as much as there is a little bit of innovation on this record, it also seemed to focus more than it really should have on repeating a similar conceptual formula. And it's debatable whether or not the record gives us diminishing returns along the way. In other words, kind of a lot more of the same, which wasn't a good thing. So let's start with our rappers themselves. Slaughterhouse, they do a fine enough job whenever they get called up for their two songs, although I'll admit I do find differentiating between them on their content to be a little bit tricky at points. And while I didn't love the D12 track Bane, I will say that it's better articulated and rapped than a lot of their previous work, and I definitely appreciate that they played the underlying concept of dealing with past grievances. They played it pretty well. They actually took it pretty damn seriously, which was a nice welcome surprise. The rest of 5-9 continues to show off a lot of solid technique, even though I do feel some of his punchlines can feel a little bit disconnected at points. And while I definitely like seeing Danny Brown on this album as a fan, I found his verse to be just a little bit thin, especially over this brand of production. And yet it was really a little bit exasperating that DJ Loaf and Trick Trick were put onto the hook and hype man rules for Detroit versus everything. Because instead of both of them, you get a big Sean verse that completely neuters the momentum of the song and seemed to just go on forever. Sure, it was a better verse than average for him, but placing him on the same song as Royce the Five Nine, Danny Brown, and Eminem himself, look, talk about being completely outclassed. Big Sean does not belong on the same song, let alone the same album as Eminem. You now, the other rapper who got solo tracks to himself on this record, including a shockingly strong bonus track, Till It's Gone, was Yellow Wolf. And honestly, I'm still not quite sure how I feel about him. I mean, I like him as a rapper with some of the more country, outback flavor, with some rougher edges, and his more melodic delivery, which actually sounds really good. But you know what? I do wish he had a little bit more lyrical flavor and some diversity in his rhymes. Although, he does have a couple solid punchlines that I definitely did like, and made me excited for his next project. And now there's Eminem. And really, I I feel like anything I say about him is just me repeating myself. His flow and his multi-syllabic rhymes 
fantastic. He's got a ton of detail and his word choice is diverse as all hell. And while he spews all sorts of controversial, vile material, once again, he's baiting and trolling popular culture for their reaction and they fall for it too often. With the underlying social commentary being that there are still plenty of people out there who will outright embrace all of it without any self-awareness whatsoever. Songs like Vegas are intended to be outrageous and over the top, as songs by a group called Bad Meets Evil are intended to be, and are obviously not supposed to be taken seriously. Now, that's not saying there aren't issues I have with Eminem here. Coming back to Vegas, the opening bars of that track feel loaded with filler lyrics, and there are points where he could definitely afford to cut to the chase with a little bit more cutting, efficient rhymes. On top of that, I don't know why he still insists on singing. Like on the sky Tyler Gray on Twisted, where only Yellow Wolf actually has a rap verse. I mean, okay, there was a good crescendo in the chorus and verses, but it doesn't nearly feel like the best utilization of all of Eminem's very strong talents. And now we get to the larger issue, content. And honestly, when this record sticks to sheer, brutal, grotesque wordplay, and the rapper's just going over the top, this record works. But the more I played through it, the more I replayed this album, the more it just felt like Eminem was, in particular, was retreading ground in his artistic process, or even backslapping. Sliding. Psychopath Killer features a jab at his mother, who I thought he reconciled with last year on Headlights. Die Alone is another song that shows off all the reasons why Eminem and Kim should never, ever get back together and how Eminem just needs to get over her already. Fine Line feels like a retread of the many of the double messages that he's put on over dozens of tracks, towing the line between releasing inspirational material and the mental loops he has to jump through in order to reconcile with some of his more vile lyrics. Twisted might as well be Love The Way You Lie Part 3. And right for me is simply Eminem going on a drug-fueled lyrical bender that's a little bit impressive, but ultimately feels just a little bit weightless, mostly because I've heard stuff like this before. And you know what? I've already said that I wasn't a fan of the lead-off single, Guts Over Fear, which is quite literally a song about Eminem recycling his creative process to mine whatever scraps might come out against this ponderously heavy hook from Sia that reminded me way too much of the worst parts of recovery. It may become worrisome here is how Eminem is coming to perceive his world around him, and incredibly incredibly potent lyrics who feels that he's maxed out and boxed in. Still impressively skilled but lacking new inspiration and increasingly feeling imprisoned by his own fame. Unable to go outside. Unable to just go browse in a target. In other words, very close to many of the same feelings that came right before he set fire to his own career with the intentional artistic suicide of Encore. Hell, he even references Fact, a song he acknowledges was the worst thing he ever released and then yet chose to put on his greatest hits album basically as a middle finger to everyone. And okay, sure, it's a label compilation. You can't ex really expect him to craft together a full album statement with your his assorted tracks and just showing up blisteringly strong wordplay. That's all you really could have expected here. But you know what? I can't help but feel that Eminem could have at least tried to plow some new ground. He could have tried to do more with this and he didn't. That bugged me. So okay, well, I've got some harsh words for the content. What about the instrumentation? Well, honestly, it's something of a mixed bag, albeit a good one, and partially for a reason that's been an issue with Eminem for years now, that being his choice of samples and singers for his hooks. I already mentioned Sia and Skylar Grey, but then you have Kobe on Die Alone, which sounded way too overmixed and borderline soulful to fit on an abrasive Eminem beat, particularly on this album. The scratchy, grainy sample on Fine Line does not sound flattering at all, and almost single-handedly knocks that song down a peg, or the Luis Resto sample on Right For Me that just still lacked a little bit of weight and presence to match out with the rest of the song. Sure, it was eerie and matched the drugged out vibe, but it could have been better mixed, which is really a damn shame because these are some of the best beats and most aggressive, abrasive beats that Eminem has put together in years. Excising some of the monochromatic drabness of Alex the Kid and showing Eminem working with some glitchier, darker production like on the murky storm, psychopathic killer, the rattling, glitchy sound on Die Alone, the heavy, sludgy crunch of the guitar on Vegas, the heavier punch of Detroit versus everyone. And while I know some people aren't really a fan of the more guitar driven tracks, like the rock sample on the title track, the distant howl of guitar and the dusty percussion on Yellow Wolf's Down, or the great groove driven lick on Till It's Gone with that thunderclap beat that I really liked. You know what? I like the rock samples. It's something new. It works for Eminem. Now that being said, like most compilation tra albums, there are a few tracks that just felt instrumentally a little bit out of place. Like the scratchy old school pianos on Slaughterhouses you already know, or the wobbling pop in the beat and obvious pitch correction on D 12's Bane. Even though I did like some of the clanking percussion on that song, hell, the drums all over this album were surprisingly strong and punchy, and it really does 
bang with a lot of presents that I did like. So, okay, you know what? At the end of the day, let's revisit my criteria for label compilations. Of course, your old Star Wars in this album, they do great. And if we're looking for an album that really got me interested in Yellow Wolf's upcoming project, well, okay, he's definitely got me on board there. As for interplay between artists, okay, it's kind of hit and miss here. And nowhere near as cohesive as you find on, let's say, the most recent Run the Jewels album. But outside of Eminem's baffling choice to not show up on D12 song, it's otherwise pretty much fine. And that's really how I feel about this album. Some great wordplay, some punchy beats, a couple fantastic lines courtesy of some of the best rappers to ever hit the mainstream. But you know what? To some extent, it feels like a little bit more of the same, especially for Eminem. And that's part of what you get with a compilation record in this vein. I get that. And expecting more from that is kind of pointless. But for me, it's a very light 7 out of 10. Definitely some enjoyable content, albeit being very familiar. And it'll definitely go down easy with a lot of hardcore Eminem fans. But you know what? He's capable of better. And I can only hope he offers to go in a new direction going forward. I mean, go political, go incredibly personal, go for a concept album or a story, push the genre towards something more experimental. You can do it at this stage in your career because right now, I've got a bit of an uneasy feeling what might come from the head of Shady Records in the future. So let's just hope my feelings go unanswered and that doesn't happen. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. What do you guys think about this album? You think it lives up to Shady Records' potential or more specifically, Eminem's potential? I think it was... It did okay. Could have done better, though. Um, if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a listen to, I'm all ears. Until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.